Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department at Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to talk about the synthesis of sulfides. And sulfides can be made through a number of reactions, but I'm going to talk about three particular. Uh, one is from thiols, using thiols as nucleophiles, one from disulfides, and then finally we're going to talk about a reaction of thiols with alkenes. So uh, in a previous video, I'd actually shared that thiols uh, react with alkyl halides and make sulfides. Generally, uh, this is done first by deprotonating uh, a corresponding thiol and then reacting it with uh, whatever alkyl, whatever uh, halide you wish to react it with. So for example, we could react uh, propane thiol with one uh, chlorobutane and form uh, this sulfide. This reaction is analogous to the uh, Williamson ether synthesis for the synthesis of ethers. And it starts with a. Let's see, we start with a sulfide, or start with a thiol, we deprotonate it using uh, an appropriate base, and again, because thiols are more acidic than alcohols, we can use weaker bases than we would use for an alcohol. And then the second step of this reaction is an SN2 substitution. And so there we go. We have a sulfide by an SN2 substitution reaction. Now, because this mechanism here is an SN2 substitution, then that means that using thiols as nucleophiles with alkyl halides are limited. Uh, this reaction shares all the limitations of any other SN2 type reaction. You know, so we preferably want to use, you know, primary alkyl halides. Secondary alkyl halides probably would work. Uh, and our thiols themselves uh, can't be too terribly bulky or the SN2 reaction won't work very well either. So the other two methods in here uh, give us a way uh, around some of these limitations. So for example, uh, in the first one from disulfides, uh, it turns out that disulfides are actually a pretty good uh, electrophile for a variety of nucleophiles. And so if you react disulfides with a Grignard reagent or, you know, the, the corresponding lith organolithium reagent, you can get uh, a sulfide and, what is that? There we go. And in this case, uh, the R is not limited to primary. Uh, so we can make uh, a lot of different kinds of disulfide or sulfides. And, and likewise, the, the other group on the sulfide isn't list limited to primary. So for example, we could start with say diphenyl disulfide and react it with isopropyl magnesium chloride as our Grignard reagent. And this reaction would make the phenyl, or, I'm sorry, the isopropyl phenyl sulfide. The other product of this reaction would be uh, what's left over from the disulfide is, is, a, is a, as a magnesium salt. And this reaction here, the mechanism turns out actually to be uh, an SN2-like reaction at
the uh, add the sulfur add-on. So let's draw this here. At nucleophilic attack at the of the Grignard reagent at the sulfur and the breaking of the sulfur sulfur single bond and to, with the leaving group. And this is this is the mechanism. And so this reaction has fewer limitations. You can have uh, different kinds of structures in the disulfide. Uh, and uh, the whatever you can form into a Grignard reagent or a lithium reagent can uh, easily be used as a nucleophile here. The, the final uh, variation here from alkenes is something called the thiol-ene reaction. Uh, and the thiol-ene reaction is really pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a reaction of an alkene. And let's, usually it's a... A terminal alkene with a thiol under conditions. I'm using R prime because I want a different uh, alkyl group on the thiol. And I'm just going to write conditions under here because there are two different ways that this can work depending on what the uh, group on the, the alkene is. But in all variations of this reaction, it's an addition reaction across the alkene, and it features anti-Markovnikov kind of addition. And if you've uh, watched any of my previous videos, by the time we get to anti-Markovnikov regiochemistry, that means that Whatever these conditions are, we're not looking at uh, a reaction that has a carbocation intermediate. So there's two ways that this can be done. One uses a radical mechanism um, and some kind of radical and hit radical initiator. So let's use do a slightly more specific example. I'm going to leave R here, but I'm going to choose a, a, a specific thiol. like ethane thiol, and as a radical initiator, the ethane disulfide, ethyl disulfide, and of course, something that uh, can set up the initial homolytic cleavage. And this reaction, uh, mechanism of this reaction features homolytic cleavage of the, oh, the sulfur-sulfur bond. Draw some radical arrows. To make uh, thionyl, or to make uh, sulfur radicals. go, make a sulfur radical. And then uh, like other kinds of radical additions to, to alkenes, let's put the, let's put the R group on the other side, like other kinds of radical additions to alkenes. This addition happens with the sulfur adding to the less substituted uh, position so that the radical that forms happens at the more substituted possible position. That's the more stable possible radical. And then uh, this reaction then can continue uh, in its propagation by hydrogen abstraction from ethane thiol. I do not like the yep. crap. Come on, radical arrows. There we go. To make uh, another sulfur radical and um, the sulfide product. Let's 
grab my sulfur sulfide product. And I did not leave myself a lot of room over there on the right, so let's scoot back over. I'm also trying to not like have this in the middle of my head. Uh, so I apologize. So this is one variation of the thiol ene reaction. We have the radical version. Um, I'm actually going to move some of this up a little bit so that I can fill in the uh, nucleophilic version of the thiol ene reaction down at the bottom. So in addition to the, the uh, radical version, there's a version with thiols as a nucleophile. So this is the nucleophilic version, version or this, this, the type of reaction this is, is a Michael addition reaction or a conjugate 1,4 uh, type addition reaction. So this version only works when the group on the alkene is electron withdrawing to use the same thiol. And instead of using radical conditions, we use a base to deprotonate the, the thiol. And so under these conditions, we have the thiolate anion. Oh, come on, let's put that, let's put that negative charge somewhere better. The thiolate anion and we have our alkene, and the alkene is now electrophilic at this position. And I have a video in another series about the Michael reaction that explains uh, this electrophilic behavior of that carbonyl compound. But uh, it boils down to this anion here being able to be resonance stabilized by the, the carbonyl group. And then we can pick up a proton from another molecule of thiol. So this really reaction really only requires a small amount of base to get started. Move my product up a little bit. Again, I want to be conscious that I don't want it to appear behind my head. Okay. And there's our, our thiolene addition product. So um, lots of ways we can make thiols. Uh, some of them rely on the nucleophilicity. Uh, I'm sorry, lots of ways we can make sulfides. Some of them rely on the nucleophilicity of sulfides. Some of them rely on the electrophilicity of disulfides. And then there's the thiolene reaction, which either has a radical version or a nucleophilic version, depending on the structure of the alkene. Thank you for watching.